Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Dr. Haifa Mamar. I am the Education Director of Emerging Technologies at Fulcella University. And we're streaming live today on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Today's guest is a special guest uh, for me. He is uh, one of my students when I was a program director over the game development program. And um, I kind of witnessed his growth as like his journey first at Full Sail when, uh, when he was going through the program. And then after he graduated, how he slowly got into uh, the field he's in today. Um, he, I, I feel kind of like very involved <laughs> in this. Uh, he's also the son of one of my close friends, Rick Ramsey, who's the director of visual arts here at Full Sail University. And so today's guest is Brody Ramsey. Hi. Welcome, Brody. I'm so here. happy to have you here. Me too. And like, I have goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Just like from like <laughs> having you here today and having an episode about you today. So, uh, Brody, what about you introduce yourself uh, to our audience and tell us what your role is today? Yeah. So, we're at a company called View Studios. Mm -hmm. um, we're um, a technology and production company where we use um, a new wave of. Uh, of filming video called virtual production. Mm -hmm. um, and the basic idea is, you know, we're using um, game engine technology and other new technologies to basically do visual effects that um, other ways of doing are kind of going out of the way and becoming old school. Okay. So. And what is your role? So I'm the uh, senior ICV effects supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, I help what is that? <laughs> That's too <laughs> <laughs> um, I help lead the team for what we do of, uh, called ICV effects, which stands for in-camera VFX. Um, normally film does something called visual effects, which is VFX, and then now we do it in camera, so mm -hmm. IC. Um, and then, so what we do is, you know, we use um, game engine technology and LED walls to basically show an extended reality of um, what normally would be a green screen, but now is, you know, uh, real time rendered uh, with full lighting control um, right in front of the camera. I love it. I mean, we're going to talk more about mm -hmm. what your current role what you do specifically in virtual production. But let's start first with your background. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell, I mean, I know it, mm -hmm. but tell our audience about your background, uh, what you studied here at Full Sail, and what was your focus specifically in Capstone? I remember your, ca your Capstone project, but yep. yeah. So um, I went and took the game development degree. Yes. Um, and my Capstone project was we made a um, third person roguelike shooter um, that was completely roguelike, um, made in Unity. Um, and it was very fun to work with a team um, and help manage and develop um, basically an automated way to create a um, customized experience. Mm -hmm. um, and the basic idea was, you know, we wanted to create tools so that as we add items, it should be as easy, you know, you just throw in a new item, throw in a new boss, and it just auto-populates these new levels for you. Um, and so I, we helped create and develop that. Um, that knowledge has helped with my stuff because we use Unreal Engine, which is similar to Unity. Um, to for game engine stuff and you know knowing how the inner workings of game en engines work has helped with what we do amazing so when you were in capstone i know you you developed with unity what was your role specifically like mm -hmm. um, um because it was a team project and usually the way we do it here at full Sail is that each member of the team will work on something specific mm -hmm. so what was your role in that um, team? i kind of felt more like a producer producer yeah mm -hmm. i helped you know help keep everything in guide and then as well as you know helped design a lot of the bosses and creative direction on, on where it was headed. Um, they did a lot of item design and things like that. So I love it. OK, so after you graduated, I mean, you graduated with a bachelor in game development. Mm -hmm. uh, you learn everything about engine development, graphics, rendering. Mm -hmm. But this is a computer science based program. So right. it's all about programming, C++, C Sharp, mm -hmm. different like artificial intelligence for games and so on. But did you work on mastering some of other skills to get you into a field or how 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 did you like how did you I, I don't want to say how did you end up in virtual production that's mm -hmm. going to be more later on but the segue to like it. kind of yeah, yeah. why were you focused what were you focused on um so I really um I say my hardest but I think the most important one to me was engine development engine. um it yeah. was extremely difficult and I think I want to struggle with but I think it is the one that stuck with me the most um, as well as networking and IT mm -hmm. um, you, you know those two things I think are what I after left I got more into and developing in I was very interested with you know behind the scenes of how unity and unreal engine worked I thought it was super cool 
um, that someone was able to, from the ground up be able to create this software that does what we do of developing tools. Yeah, so like just to explain to our audience, here at Full Sail, when, when it comes to engine development, we're building uh, game development students. They mm -hmm. are learning how to build an engine like Unity or Unreal from yeah. scratch. It's mm -hmm. like we're not using any specific engines for se per Correct. se. So, so yeah, so you had that knowledge of building an engine, but then, and you used Unity to um, during your capstone. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, you went more into that engine development more. Then. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So, um, but like, did you go into Unreal then, or like you you were so, not? Yeah, I, I you know dabbled in Unreal after that. I was curious what the other engines were doing, what tools mm -hmm. they were, um, and then from then, since I saw that um, you know virtual production was using Unreal, I got more into it and saw that's you know it's definitely heavily more of a lighting and visual tool than than mm -hmm. technical tool. Mm -hmm. um, but that part of that has always interests me. Interesting. So usually students or graduates from the game dev program they're really focused on applying for uh, like. Uh, applying to gaming studios mm -hmm. only, or sometimes we see them in simulation, mm -hmm. and they will apply to some simulation and training uh, positions. But they're more into that, like they're just into that idea of they need to be in a like a gaming studio or triple A gaming studio. Right. But you chose completely different path. Yeah. So um, how did this idea come to you? Why did you think about virtual production? Um, I've always had a passion for film. Um, it was, you know, it was always a fight between: do I want to be more technical? Do I want to do more in the film? And film is technical in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always more interested in, you know, the up and coming technology of what computers and games were doing. I think they're miles ahead of what everyone else was doing, and that that excited me more than anything. Um, going back after, I reflected and realized, you know. Um, Film has been kind of left behind. They, there's so much tools available here that they solves a lot of their issues yeah. that they're not using. And you know, virtual production is kind of that answer to that. Um, it's still like a blue ocean of things that we're figuring out and learning with them because it, you know it's not made to do what film is meant to do. Um, but the potential is there. Um, you know, as games get better, more photorealistic, easier to use, and stuff like that, it's it's becoming much more accessible for for film people. Nice. And. Um... If we're, we keep talking about virtual production and so on, so I want you to explain virtual production. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we had a graph that we can show. Mm -hmm. So if you can explain the concept to our audience, please. Yeah, so um, this will basically show a basic, a basic workflow of what we do. Mm -hmm. So someone comes to us with a concept and says, hey, I want to film this commercial. I have this much time to do it. What do we do? Um, so then we start, you know, figuring out what the art direction is. So, you know, our team works with Unreal Engine environments and starts doing 3D models and 3D rendering to basically create a virtual world of what they want, um, mm -hmm. almost like a virtual set build for, for film people or just, you know, an environment build for, for game people. Okay. Um, we then work with an art department to create digital props and physical props to merge them together. So now you have this physical version and digital version of what you're doing. Okay. Um, and then we go into practical filming where, you know, we spend all this time to merge them together so you have this small set where someone can interact with the environment and then an led wall behind it to extend that reality into a virtual world and the, our role is to blend those together so you cannot tell the difference between them um, and after that you just basic editing um, and then you have a final product so it's cut down a lot of this because the original workflow was you film in green screen and then you figure out everything else in the editing process now we're doing it all in the pre side and so now once you film everything on camera all you do is cut it up to what you like and then you're done so. i love it so what are uh, some of the skills that are needed in the virtual production field um so for depends on the roles um, exactly and let's yeah. talk about the roles like yeah. what are some of the roles that exist there and then some of the skills that you guys are looking for mm -hmm. so um one of the roles that i think is overlooked is um we do a lot of IT. Okay. There's a lot, a lot of networking going around, and we're using multiple machines all on their own network with high-speed internet, um, as well as you know, mocap has its own IT and, and network communication stuff like that. Um, that in you know, connection with um, 3D model, 3D artists, those people are very important as well. Um, th this is definitely a big open career path for them because we are in desperately need of more assets. We need more 3D artists being able to work um, at production level. To be able to make you know photorealistic things, um, and then they can also work as an operator, where you know you're working very technical on the field with the IT team and the 3D team to merge this reality together using LED panels, uh, multiple computer rendering systems, mm -hmm. um, 
and and it gets very technical very quick but you have to be able to adapt on the fly on a on location and on set to do that which gets very stressful okay so. and then i guess you also need some people with unreal absolutely unreal, unreal is like the foundation of everything right now okay. that we use um so unreal is you know the backbone of everything it's, it's is this from a design perspective like you know like sometimes here where we're thinking unreal there's the game design students but also there is the game development so there is like the programming side of it and mm -hmm. like where we're creating tools and so on but also there is like as we're using blueprints and creating things with, with the unreal it's definitely more technical more technical yeah okay, cool. um this is, you have to be able to know what tools are available in unreal and how to use them um people are going to ask you know i want you know this new effect to go on or i want to animate um some things moving across or i want to you know completely create a custom interactive experience with an ipad that just happens on the fly like you have to be able to develop that stuff for them on the fly um so that's that's the important skill so when we're talking on the fly like how much time do they give you like usually? 30 minutes like oh my gosh some, okay yeah. no no stress no, no pressure yeah. <laughs> that's um, interesting i mean it's better to have like you know weeks ahead but you know people do get inspired on the spot as they see what's capable they're like oh what if i do this really crazy thing and it's like that's cool mm -hmm. but you know now we're developing stuff in super crunch time so. so when we're talking skills, we talked about IT, people who are understand the network servers, clouds, mm -hmm. and so on. We talked about technical people with Unreal. We talked about art. We, talk, we talked about production as well. Mm -hmm. Like um, anything else, like any other skills that you guys, and I guess film people as well? Yeah. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's important for, for film people to understand this as well. Um, you know, these are two different technical skills that have two different languages that are having issues communicating with each other. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, uh, on film you have like a DIT and they, they do um, digital imaging coloring where they will color all the images based off that. Um, luckily, Unreal has that ability, okay. um, but you have to be able to communicate with them on what that what is. They, okay, yeah. what they need. Okay. Communication is a big thing. For I know sure. like in gaming already we always have, we always try to teach and explain that artists don't talk the same way to the, like as designers, as developers, as producers. They all have different like they may say the same thing, but then they use different language Correct. to like to to say these things. So understanding all these different fields and how people communicate will yep. be a big thing. Okay, so um, I mean it's a cool thing to be in virtual production, but uh, and and I and I'm admired <laughs> <laughs> uh, like. Seriously, I am admired and impressed by you, uh, Brody, because how you were able to go from the game development program where people like only focused on game to go and use that knowledge in virtual production. And as you explained, in, like that knowledge like goes like um, like it's a, it's a direct uh, It's connection. a learning curve both ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but then how did the game development program or how did the game development field prepare you for the virtual production field? Um. I think, you know, with the wide diversity of topics that we cover, um, you know, the stuff like networking, um, engine development, and in general, like working with a team were the most important things that Full Sail, I think, offer that I don't think I could get really anywhere else. Um, and with how fast it moved, like film film industry moves extremely fast. If you mm -hmm. can't adapt, like I said, you know, the rest of your stuff, 30 minutes, ton crunch time, you got to figure out ways to do it. Um, yeah. So I think that's the most important skill that I, I developed here mm -hmm. to be able to do it. Great. Then I remember like earlier when we were talking about this, also you were talking about like how rough. Like, it was rough. Like, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's one of the hardest parts was doing that. And it was a wake up experience for me. Um, and I think Full Sail was very generous in being able to support and helping me, you know, learn and grow as a person to be able to meet what was expected as well as, you know. And in the industry. Sometimes people don't sure. understand like yeah. that the industry is that demanding. It is. And yeah. like they think that we're just trying to be difficult. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. It's a it's a rough experience, and but it was a grateful one because now it's you know super important for me to be able to to be able to grow and, and do this and also transfer it to other people and help them learn as well. Well, we're so proud, Brody. I, I am personally that. very <laughs> proud. So let's talk about all the cool stuff. Let's forget about the rough stuff <laughs> and talk about the cool stuff. Um, so right now you are working for View Technologies, mm -hmm. uh, and I have lots of questions about View Technologies. But first, let's watch the sizzle reel. Okay and then um, talk about it after that. Yeah.
Go Very on. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just guessing you worked on everything that was on that on that tutorial. <laughs> to an extent, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, how many studios do they have in the country? So, operating right now, we have um, we have three. We have okay. one in Tampa, one in Nashville, and one in Vegas. And then, so um, I know that we're going to be showing. Th- so, this is the Tampa one. Yep, this okay. is Tampa. This is our first studio. Um, it, it's where you know we trained everything and learned and grew. Okay. Um, but as we expanded, we then opened Nashville. Okay. Um, and then just now opened. This is Vegas. Yep, that no. we just opened. Um, Yep, and that's our dome, which is a you know new way of thinking of trying to shoot things in a dome-like experience. Interesting. Why yeah. are you thinking about the dome? Um, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the issues that people have is you know shooting the ceiling and the wall. You're always going to see that seam. You mm-hmm. can't line up. So now if people want like a low angle shot, you can now you know get that and more immersive experience as well. So mm-hmm. it's, it's um, not really operational yet, but it's kind of like an idea of like you know what can we do with LEDs and what what direction can we go with it. So. And I love that because as we're talking about this. One thing we sh- we should mention is that this whole technology is a new technology. Extremely, yeah. Yeah, ex- it's extremely new. So, isn't like I don't think we can say that people know what they're doing. You're all experiencing together. We're mm-hmm. all learning together, and then um, I, I'm hoping share of course, <laughs> share yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what type of projects does your team typically typically get involved in? So, um, our productions are usually. Um, you know, commercial and, and music videos are mostly what we do. Um, we know we've we've been dabbling as we expand in feature films and um, television shows and bigger projects. Um, we do do some live event stuff here and there, some broadcasting and and um, like we've done like corporate events and then even like light in person events where we had people come in and hosted like full on dinner parties and inside of our volumes and stuff like that. So okay, so because of this uh, uh, new technology, I know that um, as we said. It's new, but then it also comes with challenges. For sure, probably. Yeah. Uh, because people don't know, mm-hmm. uh, um, don't know the technology. W- what would be one of the biggest challenges, uh, or like some of the challenges uh, that, um, like that, usually people will face with this new technology, um, or that you faced? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say there's there's two main things. Um, one is. Um, it's a little intimidating uh, creatively what to do because I think, you know, your first thought is there, you can do anything, which is true, but there are some limitations, you know, expectations of what. Limitations in terms of the technology itself or limitation in, or in terms of what? Um, I mean, yes, there's a technology, but also like time and budget, you know, sometimes okay. people, you know, want a fully photorealistic thing, um, which we can do, but like it depends on the time. Um, so it's just, you know, communicating that people don't understand that, you know, these things take time, it's process and and trying to educate that onto people. A lot of people aren't used to the 3D and game development world, so trying to communicate that with them so they can be educated and understand it is is one of the biggest challenges for sure. And then uh, on the other side, there are game development people who don't understand film. Um, so as you know, I get more people and help train them and understand they don't understand the culture of film and like what, what that entails and what their expectations are and, and how to adapt to that. It is true that like mm. actually you're having engineers and developers who mm. are now talking to film uh, mm-hmm. filmmakers, so it's... It, it, Obviously, it's not going to be easy for them to talk together and Correct. like understand. So marrying those two fields mm-hmm. is it's not going to be um, something easy to achieve. But it is a growing field for sure. and it's a big thing right now where everyone uh, it's getting into virtual production. So uh, interesting. Um, so let's talk about you now. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, you've been on so many different projects and your achievements are so impressive. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Rick, uh, like, send us uh, always, like, every time that you do something new, he always send us, like, he, he, like, he's so proud. We're all very proud of what you've been doing. So let's talk about one of, like, some of these projects, the sure. main projects. Uh, which one you want to start with? Um, so we can talk about WWE. Um, start with WWE. Yeah, We're so going to show this video, and then we can talk over the video. Yeah, um, yeah so this is one of the, I think most ambitious projects we've ever done. Um, they came to us um, out of nowhere and said, we want to film stuff for 50 wrestlers in two days. Uh, two days? Two days. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. We, they wanted to film their entire years with the content. Um, you know, we only had two days to work with them, 25 uh, uh, wrestlers a day. Okay. Um, so it was crazy. So we basically what we did is we basically did what we call a car wash where we had three different sets set up. Um, you can kind of see them cycling through here. Okay. But this one right here is like an, just a normal LED wall that just cycled through different stuff. And we just got, you know, generic poses that they did it. Um, 
the other one, this one is a you know high speed camera with a technical camera robot mm-hmm. um, that we partnered with MRMC to do like a really fast um, and precise camera moves. Um, the other one is a uh, big Unreal Environment um, that you know had custom names per character or per uh, wrestler, um, for and we had to cycle through and do every single one of their stuff like back to back, like as one was walking, another one was walking out. So I had to change everything on the fly that would only be possible in Unreal. So um, as well as you know, the cool thing about Unreal is you have this camera tracking technology, so you have the the 3D effect now with it. Um, so as the camera moves and pans, you can now see the depth with it. So you can see in the burlesque signs that the letters were floating, but they kind of move around the character as if they're actually it. immersed by it. Nice. So, I mean, like one of the challenges there is like two days. Mm-hmm. You have to do all yes. like this in two days. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but what are some of the other challenges there? Um, like I said, uh, um, communication expectations. Um, communication. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they didn't realize what that would take, so they didn't know what they were asking. Um, but we were able to pull it off. Like, the, the tools we have available, we're, we're able to do it, but it's it's tight. Um, it's always a very tight crunch line, how most entertainment industries are. Um, but I feel like with Unreal, it's, like, very adaptable, very flexible, and stuff like that. So. And one thing that always I hear about virtual production is usually you may – uh, start like behind schedule, but you will always b- end Correct. ahead of schedule. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, for the most yeah. part. Um, you know, normally, you, it, um, people at the start, the first few days are kind of rough because everyone's trying to get into it and and learn it. But also, like, there's that's where all the technical issues happen. Once it's set, it's set. Um, honestly, on once things are shooting, my job is super easy. I kind of just push buttons. Um, but all the prep and test and you know running through all the tech is the hard part. Mm-hmm. After that, it's you know. It's a game engine. It'll do exactly what you tell it to every single time, as long as you've programmed it correctly. So that's right. Okay. What about other projects? Um, the other one was Tom Cruise. Um, okay. Which you can and we have a video. Let's watch it. Football. America's game. A sport that rewards hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and skill. A sport that challenges you to always get better, to never settle for second place. Because America doesn't root for the timid or the scared, or those who back away from the challenge. We root for the bold, the brave, the risk takers who will push to the very limits to succeed. But after all, life is more fun when it comes with a little action. Cool. I love it. So um, tell me about this project. Yeah, so this one was a crazy one. Um, similar to WWE, we had a very short turnaround. Um, but they basically came to us, I think, on a Monday and was like, hey, Tom Cruise is coming in Wednesday. Uh, the Super Bowl is this Sunday. We want to... Oh, it was for the Super Bowl. Yep. Okay. It was, it was a promo for the Super Bowl. They want to air it um, by Friday. Okay. Um, so they're like, what do we do? So I was like, Tom Cruise just showed up. They just gave a bunch of assets and just like, we're like, go ahead and have fun. Um, but it shows, you know... It's a simple concept. Um, you know, all we did was just play videos behind him and you know coordinate with with his script on what what he needed to do, um, and we got a really cool hype like experience for that. Um, it was very quick, very very fast, but it, it got it done. But then, like, so you're trying to make it seem like it's very easy. <laughs> you're just playing videos, but I know there is a lot of programming behind sure. it. There is a lot of Unreal, yeah. like engine also behind it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what was it for that project specifically that you have to do, like in terms of programming and so on? Um, well, this one is more, I would say, um, you know, video management editing. So this okay. is, you know, a little more, more pivot in a different direction. Um, okay. So this is, you know, it's a technical skill, but it's not the what, what game engines do, but, uh, you know, more editing, video management, media server, which Unreal um, has some really good integrations in doing that I've been, I've been dabbling in and doing, so. Love it. Okay, and then I know that you've been working with so many different stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so let's talk about some of these and we will be uh, showing uh, uh, pictures. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one's again with Cam- Carrie Underwood. Um, mm-hmm. She had, you know, f- like four songs being released the same week and, she wanted to film virtual concert versions of it to show on Today Show, Jimmy Fallon, um, and other stuff as well. So she just came in and filmed them all back to back. Um, and we made these environments in Unreal um, with a oh. very sh- uh, short around, uh, turnaround time. Um, we didn't even use tracking. They were just purely just animated backgrounds behind her. So, yeah. And then you also worked with 
Tom Cruise and mm -hmm. other people. Yeah, and we did, um, you know, um, I can't say too much about it, but the Nick Cage film that we just um, we just finished rap shooting on, um, that one, um, the whole thing is, you know, I think it's 40 minutes of, of them in a car driving, and we had to go and basically create all these custom driving plates of, you know, specific areas they wanted to go shoot in, certain paths they want to take. There's, like, chase scenes that all developed, and we had to go and develop all that um, all in real time, so everything worked uh, depending on they could spin around the car, get front angles, back angles. And we got through 13 pages of script in one day with six different angles, which, Oh my gosh, which is that's impossible. <laughs> I mean, like that's yeah. impressive. Wow. Um, yeah. They came to us and said there was no other way to get this movie done. Um, and I found out they've been trying to make this movie for a long time. There's just been no way to do it. So and how did they think about virtual production? Um, they were just like, we need a fast way to film driving plates. Um, okay. So um, they needed a way to film a car in an immersive way. That's comfortable. Um, so they didn't have to rehearse car chases every time. So they found us uh, because they happen to be local to Vegas and they partnered with us to do it. So oh, I love it. Okay, so on top of all these amazing projects uh, and the stars, I mean, like now you're becoming a star, Brody. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> you did receive the Telly Award. Yes. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'm a proud, <laughs> like <laughs> proud uh Professor, director. Yeah. So this is the Telly Award picture. Yep. And we get to your name in there. So tell me what this Telly Award uh, is about and what was the project about? So this one was um, what I'm really proud of. Um, Disney came to us and they basically um, had this cruise ship that they wanted to film a commercial for, um, you know, I think by the end of the year, but the thing is the, the ship wasn't going to be built for another year, um, but they needed a commercial done by. Oh, okay. So, but, oh, okay. Interesting. So yeah. they need the commercial before the ship. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah. Um, so they came to us and was like, and they asked us to rebuild the entire ship in Unreal perfectly to scale and in every way possible, and which we did. Um, we got it done and then we shot an entire commercial on a ship that didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. um, and it looked great. It was fully immersible and, and that's where that came from. We're super proud of it. And it's one of our first projects as well. So... What, what were some of the challenges during that project? Um, so getting photorealism is is very difficult, um, but it was, it was uh, you know, a testament to what the technology can do. Um, you know, that was our early start. So, you know, our, our hardware and, and everything was very rough and we encountered a lot of challenges early on, but I think very quickly we were able to figure it out and fine tune our system, so. That's amazing. Because it's new technology, you know, we're trying to figure out what boundaries we can push and then as well as, you know, what corners can we cut. Um, so that was one of those experiences, you know, we cut too many corners. Now we got to push the boundaries even more. So, yeah. So as we're as you're going in this uh, in this field and uh, I want to highlight again that this is a new field and I keep talking about challenges because mm -hmm. I guess there isn't kind of like no one knows what they're doing, right? Like you all mm -hmm. are just experiencing, trying things and then documenting things. Yep. Um, but uh, but you are facing other challenges as you're going mm -hmm. uh, through this, like not only from a technology perspective, maybe from like other perspective as well. So like, can you share some of these uh, in general and some of like the, mom the moments that, you know, like once we overcome that challenge, like you feel that mm -hmm. like pride, it's like, yes, I did it. Like. If you can share one experience about that. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is, um, you know, trying to help people understand how to use this technology. Um, you know, people in the film industry are, have their own way of doing things and are very traditional. Um, and then, you know, every time I can walk away with a client saying, wow, that was actually really nice to shoot in and people come in skeptical to do it too. And then want to walk away to change their mind is I think one of the proudest things that I think I love doing. Um, so as that. well as making it work, like people come to me with like crazy things, like, how do we do this? I'm like, I never thought about doing it that way, but we can do it. Um, and I, you know, I, I can name probably hundreds of times that has happened, you know, um, some examples of this here like that was like, how do we film 20, 50 in actors in one day? It's like, well, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, is insane. Yeah. I mean, but you did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's talk about the future. Are mm -hmm. there any exciting projects on the horizon that you can share? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. We are developing our own software um, that I'm helping, you know, manage our, our team do that. Um, we kind of feel what like... What is the software for? Um, the basic idea is, you know, um, we kind of feel like there's not like a good automated way to run productions. Okay. Um, so we're working on trying a way to do it. So, you know, management, uh, call times, um, project management stuff, like just a general software to help 
uh, and almost like social media it as well all at the same time mm -hmm. to help people connect and be be connected with it um you know as well integrate with unreal you can also use that to um create your environment and do stuff using that software as well so you can now completely run through everything in the software have everyone all the crew lined up everything projected to what it's going to be you show up turn the camera on and it works all just from the software so i love that yeah okay any other um projects um you know, metaverse has always been a topic, you know. We're, oh, yeah. Oh, you got more. <laughs> <laughs> um, How? We're always in talks about metaverse and, and a lot mm -hmm. of what we do is like social experiences as well. So, you know, we have people come in and try to do like metaverse type experiences and okay. immersive ways to immerse themselves in, in the metaverse. So, um, so you're creating a digital representation of things? Yeah, we do that too. Um, yeah, so we, like we try to recreate um, a one-to-one -one scale. We've done it with CVS where we try to, you know, fully create a CVS store to do it. Um, and then, you know, that also is a great asset for them because now they can come back and shoot in that store whenever they want, change it and modify it however they want without ever having to close down a store. So oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I know that we were talking about Oculus also earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people um, use Oculus to like um, pre-visualize stuff. Um, and, you know, we're developing ways to look at using it as like a location scout software. And you can, same same idea is like, you know, you can walk in do all your stuff, set up all your lights, set up all your cameras in VR, and then you turn the camera on and it works, you know, exactly how you asked it to, so. Love it. Okay. Um, and then also I know that you were sharing with me earlier, like there are the tools part of it as mm -hmm. well, like you're creating new tools for mm -hmm. different perspectives, like de depending on the project, like you, you, you are into helping the developers as well create new tools. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like one for example is, um, you know, we shot a, some stuff for a workout video for a trend mill, and um, we were able to sync their their treadmill software with our with Unreal, along with virtual production tools. And so now the person was able to walk along the treadmill and edit, you know, speed, incline, and map to Unreal. And it, and it even would react to the incline. So you know, as Unreal was moving down this area, her speed and incline would change based off what her terrain was and stuff like that. Oh, so I love this. Yeah, and love then we were it. able to film an entire now workout. You're giving me ideas for new, new project video. <laughs> um, you were able to film an entire workout video that way. So now and then. You know, we took that data and sent it to their software. So now, if they, if someone else wants to follow along that workout, they can, and it'll do the same pathing that that our real environment mm. mapped out for them. I love it. So, so probably there are lots of students who are watching us today. They're uh, interested in knowing how they can get into the virtual production. Mm. What kind of skills uh, they need to have, or what should they should they work on mm -hmm. to get into that? Um, so, coming from a game development background, everything. Everything in the game development degree is very, very important. Um, Unreal knowledge, Unreal skills, all that is super important in, in there. Um, networking for IT, um, all that insane. Can, cannot emphasize that enough with how much um, IT stuff is needed. Um, and then, can you go? Can you explain more? What is it that like uh, they need? Because sometimes people don't understand that IT can be can work in the gaming right. industry or in the virtual production industry. Like there is, all, there are always um, perceived as though those people who are just like working on something mm -hmm. specific and like not in these different entertainment fields. So um, I would love for you to explain why IT is important in these fields. So from the the basic point of just like management is like we have so many machines that all are communicating through the network you have to know how they're communicating how they're wired how you know how the switches are all communicating directly with everything um, and how that internal network works and then externally you know uh, UDP um, is a big thing um, that trend mill project the only way we could get to work with the UDP a lot of mocap mo mo stuff uses UDP um, and stuff like that um, we also use a lot of our robots um, for you know to do repetitive moves and pre-program moves in an unreal engine that would send you know networking data across that as well and you have mm -hmm. to know because no one's really creating ways to do it you have to create the communication yourself um so you have to know what to do with that and i, I know we um earlier we were talking this this is all wireless correct yeah. yeah everything we're doing is pretty much wireless there are some situations where we are wired but everything is pretty much wireless and then you're gonna have to like use it like that transport protocol like mm -hmm. to exp like to i know udp but like like you're kind of as you said you're building that communication between all this Correct. like different components of the network yeah no one's thought i need to this communicate wirelessly with this so now we have to build it okay. all the time so do you, do you foresee or like i don't know if it's the case right now cybersecurity to be part of this as well absolutely okay. yeah 100%. Um, cyber yeah we've already been talks and you know developing ways to to integrate that into our system as well so what about artificial intelligence? 
Yes, I think uh, AI is very important. I know like stuff like uh, like Dolly and everything. They actually even I think released a version that now you can um, similar process do the same thing with three D models. So if okay. you could find a way to automate the three D yeah, experience, like generate and yeah. yep, mm-hmm. I think you know that would speed up the process dramatically. Now I can get you know an exact phrase from a client saying I want this, send it into the generator, and boom, now we have a full customizable three D environment made generated from the AI. Um, I think you know the direction that's going is definitely what we're looking at as well. And then are you guys looking into any metrics about this, any data science as we're as you're generating this or not? We're yeah, we're trying to collect data for everything. Okay. So yeah. Um yeah. Sounds good. And then uh I don't I don't know, I'm looking at the time. How are we doing with time? Okay. So um I'm gonna ask two more two more questions and then open it to the audience. Okay. So can you share any tips with our audience? Sure. Um, just general advice. I do think, you know, this This to me, I got very lucky because I found two things I'm very passionate about. And luckily there was an emerging way for me to merge them together. Um, I think as long as you follow that and believe in it, there's a way to do it. Um, you know, I think film has been hesitant to get into what tech can do, but it's a very technical field, so they shouldn't be. Um, and then they actually merge together very well. It's just, you know, developing that way to do it. I think if you're passionate about it, you can you can make anything work is the best way to, to, to approach anything on that. I love how you're saying that, uh, like, if you have a passion, go after it. Like For sure. Sometimes when we're talking about uh, development, um, but, like, for example, for me, like, I was so much into, like, um, medical, the medical mm-hmm. field, but then I went into engineering and so on. But then I kind of found found a way how to have both. Right. So now it's like filming and uh, development and have both. But yeah, I agree with you. Like always, follow your dreams, follow your passion, mm-hmm. and believe in yourself. Don't ever say that you can't or there is no way. Um, what about if we have students who want to contact you? Would be interested in like mentoring some students, helping some of yeah. our students. Um, we have an internship program. It's on our website. Um, we're always willing to bring people in. Um, sorry, and then they can work directly with us and learn the workflow, study us, we'll learn what we're doing, and and we're very communicative and helping them understand what we do. And we're very open to ideas. I you know I've had other interns come in and pitch and give me great ideas on what they think things should do because it's such a new emerging tech and industry. You know. Fresh eyes are always great to come in and tell us how how they think this could go. So, and I know that also, like uh, from usually in this field, and I don't know if your company does that, but usually also uh, companies that are in virtual production, they're trying to also um, partner with schools like mm-hmm. high schools or middle schools to just like help them teach those types of skills. Yeah. Uh, to um, to their students, I don't know if you is doing anything of this. Absolutely, like yeah. um. Our CEO is, you know, a big believer in, you know, helping the youth and that they are the next wave of of people that are going to help push this into where it's going. So, you know, we've, you know, we've donated some walls to some schools and we're always working with technolo- uh, other schools. And um, as we expand to Orlando, we're helping to branch more with the relationship with Full Sail um, to help people do that. And we bring in people from like middle school, high school all the time to come in and look at our school. And they're always inspired every time on, on what they can do. So oh, I'm sure they're inspired. <laughs> they're impressed. OK, I want to leave some time for the questions. What are some of the differences in VR development compared to traditional game development? I assume they mean VP instead of VR. No, yeah. they're, no they're probably talking VR, right? Yeah. Is yeah, it VR or reality. VP? Yeah, virtual reality? Probably yeah. both. Let's, let's address yeah. both. Sure. Okay. Um, so for like for us specifically, uh, we're just focusing more on the tools. So Unreal already has a foundational standpoint of you know you can explore Unreal Engine Editor and Unreal. The thing is being able to explore it and use film tools in it is what we do. Um, in terms of that, it's not too different, um, but it is you know we're at a point where now we're working on the engine instead of working on a game. The game is made to you know you make something and it's packaged up and then you ship it Mm -hmm. we want something that is affecting it in real time so we're always trying to get as deep into the engine we can um that's the biggest difference between us and everything we do i can't speak too much on on the vr standpoint but i know it's more more on that that aspect but from what i've seen that's that's what we're dealing with okay are there specific platforms you prefer to work with and why are there any specific platforms you prefer to work with and why um 
So we don't actually publish anything on platforms. We work everything in editor. Um, I mean, if it was to pick, it would just be you know Windows platform would be, would be better. Um, but our platform that we use for um, for virtual production is called Endisplay, um, and it's a uh, real time renderer um, that allows you to um, project things on the wall to custom sizes. Which, uh, from what my experience in you know publishing a game, you know you're not you can't really do that easily, um, as well as you know, at least without having the full real time control. So. Okay. Can you add live video and other media formats to Unreal? Can you add live video and other media formats to Unreal? Yes. So yeah, a lot of the stuff like video playback and everything we can pipe in directly to Unreal. And there is an um, upcoming way of, of doing that called um, NDI, um, which is um, network video signal. So you can you know, have a media server somewhere remotely and send that through an IP address, and then Unreal can take it in and play it as a video anywhere else. So And then you can edit it in real time as well, and all that. Oh, right. Really? All that time would be um, done. So, yeah, I suppose if I had an editing software, um, I can send that output through NDI and I can change the color, speed, uh, clip it however I want. And it just, Unreal just sees it as a TV monitor. And all those changes are happening somewhere else. So, okay, amazing. <laughs> what does your current team look like and how important is collaboration on your projects? Um, so, right now we have one to two people in every studio um, at the very least. And Tampa is our biggest. I think we have about five people. Um, in there and we usually have you know a 3d artist an operator um and then someone on it is usually how we do it and then on bigger projects we have someone that's um, a supervisor over all of them that helps manage and communicate with the team directly so and then how is the collaboration how do you guys work together collaborate together communicate as we were talking earlier right language you you all like may say the same thing but you're using different languages like yeah that's where um yeah so we as a team we all work communally and understand each other as long as we understand our financially what, what we're saying um that's what's really important the hard part is you know as clients come in directors and dps what they want that's where that that supervisor comes in they they are the translator between everyone and they you know educate them like here's what you can do and then they also like well i want to do this and then they go back to the tech team and do that so it's this back and forth tug of war game of you know this impartial party of trying to creatively reach a decision between both of them mm -hmm. so and then sometimes like i guess based on the time based uh based also on uh on the technology you can say that like basically you cannot do it right yeah 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 that's that's what that person's role is you know they get to a point where like you can't do that um it's also their op opportunity to create you know solutions of like if you want to try something like that we can do this you know mm -hmm. luckily with unreal you have a lot of diversity so you can try and try new things um without you know spending too much time on it so did you find um any kind of roadblocks with unreal specifically like where like you really wanted to do something and you were not able to do it mm. I'm sure there is, not at the moment, because I know a lot of stuff, like, eventually we bug Unreal enough and they end up fixing it. Okay. Uh, they end up supporting it in some so way. So you, you guys are in close communication yeah. with Epic? Of yeah. course, yeah. Um, you know, I think I think Unreal 5 is the biggest changer. Um, lighting has always been, it's been great in Unreal 4, and 5, it's been amazing. Okay. Um, so, like, with the new lighting system and that, it's it's been amazing. And, and the issues I had with 5, they're fixing, you know, I think next month. So it's it's a lot but it moves so quick that you know by the time i have an issue it's pretty fixed amazing and some of the projects you worked on uh, i guess the tom cruise one was at ue5 uh that was ue4 ue4 yeah. okay okay cool other questions there's a lot of questions about the hiring process and specifically at view mm -hmm. can you talk about your hiring experience and what new developers can expect when entering this industry can you talk about the hiring experience at what and what new developers can experience at the interview? Okay, um, so my experience was um, I showed up and just started, you know, hey, I have this background, I love film, let me help. And as I just kept showing so up- So they didn't even have an open position? No, they, they had like an internship, like, yeah, you can come in for an internship if you're willing to show up. Whatever. How did you learn about them? I saw an article online okay. um, and it was like, I, you know, at first I saw the ILM doing their stuff with Mandalorian. And, yes. and they were starting to build and create this new way of doing it. So Mandalorian, I think, was the first like movie, first project that used that virtual production. Yeah, at least yeah. like a high budget. I know, okay. like you know, it's been kind of talked about, but you know, it didn't get really big until they announced, like, hey, this is how we're doing it, which it's been kind of under wraps. And they they have a huge studio mm -hmm. that somehow no one noticed until until um, about 2020. Okay, um, maybe late 2019. Okay, um, and then after that, um, you know. 
So you saw the article about about mm-hmm. view, view technologies, then you just yeah. showed up. We were <laughs> so they were Diamond View at the time, um, okay. which is just a production company, and then um, I joined, started helping them do productions, and and they've been doing virtual production for about the same amount of time. Um, and then they saw my worth. They you know agreed you know you can help out as long as you need. Um, and then I, from then I've been developing, you know, learning new skills of like, you know, I didn't know how to video edit. I'm now learning how to video edit from this and stuff like that. So there's skills that, you know, I think people are going to learn. I would very much get into, you know, what skills do filmmakers need to know? Um, and that's stuff you can do. Unreal has very good documentation on ICVFX. Um, I recommend looking at that. Um, there's some really good tools and resources there to, to help people get started and, and at least ask the right questions to know, like, what is, where, where does this go? Because it's a huge rabbit hole of stuff that you can get into that I feel like as you dig, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. So do you think if like uh, developers are going to show up or the, uh, to an interview with Vue Technologies, uh, they're expected to know at least ICVVX? Yeah, at the very least. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if I, if someone came to me today, I'm going to send them, you know, that document and be like, hey, here's this. Um, come back to me with a project that shows that you you can do the workflow um, is basically the, the basic idea of what I would want them to do. Um, as well as you know, basic 3D understanding. Everyone should know how how 3D renderers work, and and even like you don't have to know how to use Cinema 4D, but it's good to know how it works. Um, and then, you know, IT networking stuff. You should know how IP management works and UDP commands work, and and all that stuff. So I love it. Okay, and then uh, I guess um, do you guys have any technical interview, like beside like them asking in general, like do they have like kind of like um, a whiteboard? Uh, problem solving there or no? Um, we we kind of send a project and then let them come back with it and oh, see what okay. it is. So okay. it's like, hey, here's your here's your task. Come back with it instead of that. So um, we haven't really been been doing the whiteboard stuff. Um, we just kind of like, hey, show, show that and then come back with it. How um, long do you, do you to give them? Um, I would say no more than a week. Okay. Um, kind of depends on their schedule, but like you know, it's I think it's some something someone can do in one to two days. Um, but it is because it's new. It's you know, it's going to take some research, and that's mostly what we're looking for. Is you know, how can you figure this problem out when there's no documentation on it. So I love it. Okay. Um, we are also, you know, as we're developing our software, we are looking at other people in that and, and learning how they can work with that as well. And that's, you know, basic standard programming stuff with that, I would say. So, so they do need programming. So C++, C Sharp, I guess? Yeah, we're, we're using stuff like that to, to, you know, for our software and stuff like that. So okay. any other programming languages? No, um, I'm, I know there's some Python talking. Python? The, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, mostly C++. Okay. Our last question, in the interest of creating environments as quickly as possible, do you find that Houdini is a big part of the workflow for virtual production? Um, I love Houdini. I think it's super cool, and I, I encourage people to look into it. We haven't yet integrated it yet um, to our workflow. but can, I you, can you talk about this so that like at least people who don't know? Yeah, so are. Houdini is like a, a VFX software, but it's uh, very, very technical. Um, you know, it's you can, you can think of like um, a way to animate and do stuff, but it gets you down to C++ level to be able to program and custom stuff to do it. Um, it's a very useful tool, um, but because it's very technical, it's not fast enough for, for how fast we move. Um, but I've been pushing for, you know, I think this should be what everyone uses because I think it's so much potential in what it can do. So. Okay. So then, yeah, our yeah. students then should learn that I as well. I agree, yeah. So. Any more questions for that? That's it for right now. Thank you okay. so much. <laughs> okay, and then... I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna ask one more uh, question um, before uh, the end of this uh, episode. Um, well, two questions, <laughs> if that's okay. Um, the first one is, um, can you tell me about one experience, whether here at Full Sail or during your journey as you're working in the virtual production, that really affected you and helped you, like mm-hmm. get to where you are today, um, like from. Um, Either professionally or like uh, like from confidence perspective, especially in this field, mm-hmm. when we're talking about a new field where like we don't nothing exists in there, and um, going in there, people will look at you as yes, you are the professional, you are the SME, the subject matter expert, you know mm-hmm. everything, and but also like probably from my perspective, me specifically, like I would be like questioning myself always. Is like am I doing the right thing? Am I am I guiding people to the right way am i taking the right decisions right so do you did you ever experience something like that as you're going in this field yeah um you know 
I think it's really hard in this field because a lot of people pretend they're subject matter experts, especially in a field that's not established yet. Mm -hmm. um, so there are people who are like, yeah, I shot a volume before. I know what I'm doing, but they really don't. And I really doubt that they have. Um, but realistically, you know, me and my team have been doing this for almost two years now. And and I don't think anyone's done done it for as long with this short amount of pro many projects as we have because we've had done probably hundreds of projects in the span of a year. Um, and it's doubling quickly as we have more studios. So um, how many projects do you have per 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 month? I'd say I don't know, like, uh, kind of like between five to ten. Maybe, oh wow! Uh, okay, I would say um, that's like maybe on a slow time. Like I know we've and bigger projects is at least once a month, and the bigger projects are the one that you know take up the most most resources and are the biggest learning experiences. Um, but like I said, those um, those people were always trying to push back, and you know it's come time and time again to show that like we do know what we're doing. Um, you know, this is a new field. We are finding the best workflow to do it. Um, it's very difficult, but there is one out there. And, and I think that approach to me has finally been waking up to be like, yeah, we, we're doing this and we're doing it correctly. So that's amazing. And then one last question. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself? Let's say in five years. Um, I really see, uh, us as a studio paving the way for it. I want to help manage the up and coming people. Um, you know, this is a new career opportunity for many, many people and I want to help lead and guide them so they don't it. have to deal with the headaches that we went through. Um, I want to, you know, set this as a foundational ground of like, here's the new standard, everyone's going to follow it. And, you know, we want everyone to be educated and understanding it as much as possible. So I love it. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we're good, right? Yes. We have about five more minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I mean, thank you, Brody. Like this is this has been amazing. Uh, again, like I'm very proud of like what you've accomplished. Like seeing you from the day you joined Full Sail, as you went through the program, uh, when you graduated, what you've become today, and I'm like, I'm just I appreciate I'm, it. I'm just very proud, uh, and I learned a lot today actually from from like. Um, everything you've been working on. I mean, like, I was keeping in, like, um, how to say it, like, um, following everything you're doing, but mm. I'm learning more about what is it exactly in this field and what you're doing exactly in this field. Um, so I'm, um, thank you for thank you. coming I today. I couldn't have done it without you guys' support. <laughs> um, like I said, Full Sail was rough, but what got me through it was support from everyone around it. So I, I think it's very important to lean on those people because they are here to help you. They want you to learn. They want you to grow. So that, that when I learned that, that's what helped me got through. And that's, that's the mindset I want to bring to everyone else going forward. So I love it. Thank you so much. Of course. So uh, please keep following us. Uh, we have another episode of uh, Tech Tuesday in September, September 27th. Uh, we will also be uh, streaming live. Uh, we can't <laughs> share yet what the topic is going to be about, but like follow us and you will be really impressed. Uh, this is Dr. Haifa Mamar. I am the Education Director of Emerging Technologies from Full Sail University. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. Have a great day. <laughs>